Self-confidence really comes from feeling good about yourself. And one of the best ways to feel good about yourself is at the end of the day to know that you poured it on, you did your best. You know that if you can have this kind of a good day, you can have another one the next day. And those days become the weeks. The weeks become the months. And the month becomes a powerful year. Part of good health is self-confidence. That self-confidence affects your health. It affects your future. It affects your psyche. Well, this is true. One of the great powers is self-confidence. Self-confidence means willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve. Some people say, well, I'll do it for a little while and see what happens. You know, I'll try a couple of things. If that doesn't work, I'm out of here. And all of us know that that kind of person doesn't have much of a future. But if you're willing to do whatever it takes, if I have to learn a couple of things, I will learn those things. If I've got to learn five or six things, I'll learn all six. If I have to take an extra class, I'll take an extra class. If I've got to read the books, I'll read the books. If I have to consult with people who know more than I do, I will do the necessary consulting. Whatever it takes, I will do. That starts to develop unbelievable self-confidence. Self-confidence also comes from the ability to rise above your circumstances, whether it's the little challenges or the big challenges. If you're willing to do that, I promise you, this kind of power will work for you and in you. We choose to do less than we possibly can. It affects our self-confidence, our self-worth. Can you imagine what you'd end up being after 10 years of doing a little less every day? Think about it. Doing less could ruin your life. What could I become? What could I really do in the marketplace? In enterprise, home, family, experience, love, friendship, marriage, how valuable could I become? Am I valuable enough to work on what's not working? So I can reach my full capacity. If I'm operating at 20%, what could I possibly do with the other 80%? Once you start understanding how valuable you are, it's a whole new experience, understanding self-worth. It plays a major role in our ability to be self-enterprising. Now you can reverse the process of doing a little less, doing a little less. You alter the course by doing a little more each day, a little more, a little more, a little, and pretty soon, you'll develop a new habit of doing rather than neglecting. It will increase your confidence and your courage and your creativity and your self-worth. It's not what we get or what we accumulate that makes us valuable. It's what we become that makes us valuable. Success isn't in having. Success is in doing. I think that simply doing less than you can mess with the mind. It causes all kinds of psychic damage. I think being less than you can be trying less than you could try, doing it with less enthusiasm than you could do it. Messes with the mind. The minute you turn this around and start extending yourself, you'll see immediate rewards. You see, it's not what we get that makes us valuable. It's what we become. Discover all you can do. Discipline is the requirement for progress, and affirmations without discipline are, in reality, delusions. There's nothing wrong with affirming the good life. As long as we are disciplined enough to take action. Affirmations can be effective as long as we remember two very important rules. Number one, we should never allow affirmation to replace action, activity, enterprise. And number two, whatever we choose to affirm must be the truth. Wow! Face it, accept it, be responsible for it, and change it. By admitting that you're broke, by saying it out loud, you'll probably be disgusted enough to start the thinking process on how to change it. Confronting the truth and then applying the discipline to express the truth instead of disguising it inevitably leads to positive change. And reality is always the best beginning. And the power of faith starts with reality. Faith isn't faith unless it's all you're holding on to. If your life and circumstances have resulted in a situation that is ugly, Call it ugly. And if faith is all you've got left, use it. Create your own personal miracle. Once we understand and accept the truth, the promise of the future is freed from the shackles of deception. Also, one more thought on discipline. Lack of discipline starts to erode our psyche. 
one of the greatest temptations is to just ease up a little bit. Right? The slightest lack of doing your best starts to erode the sight. All you have to do is start the smallest discipline that now corresponds to your own philosophy. Like, I should and I could and I will no longer let neglect stack up on me. So that I will have the sorry scenario six years from now giving some excuse instead of celebrating my progress. That's the key to discipline. Now you've got something. A vessel in which to put it. And now the equities start to flow. And the early return. I'm telling you. If you start this process, the early return will have you so excited you commit yourself to this strategy for the rest of your life. Whatever you do, don't become a victim of your sins as you engage in this debate. What to eat, what not to eat, where to go, where not to go, what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do. What I'm saying here is be your own person. You don't have to be a model of someone else. You don't have to do it like anybody else. Buy what you want to buy. Listen to what you want to listen to. Make changes if you want to make changes and don't make changes, right? It's your life, I'm telling you. And don't let anybody persuade you any different. Success is not a stereotype. Success is the continual unfolding of the design of your own life and pulling it off. To continue unfolding the design of your own personal life, pulling it off whatever degree you wish. Take on responsibilities or refuse responsibility, that's strictly all up to you. We've been given the power of choice. Humans can change, do anything they want to do. But here's what's interesting about all life forms except humans. Every life form except humans drive to the max of its potential. A tree grows as high as it can, drives down every root it can, produces every leaf it can, extends itself as far as it possibly can, Every life form extends to the max except human beings. We've been given the dignity of choice. Do a little to make yourself comfortable and forget the rest or do it all. And there's nobody here to dictate. You've got to do it all. You can do a little, do some, do some more. Take advice, but don't take orders. Somebody says, well, you need to be successful. That's a personal choice. Being successful. Abraham Lincoln said, since I would be no one's slave, I will be no one's master. Excellent philosophy. If a guy says, hey, I'm soon cashing it in. I'm heading for the mountains. I'm going to live in a little cabin, live off the land and feed the squirrels. If he goes and does that, guess what? He's a smashing success. That is the epitome of success. Giving a design to your life and going to pull it off making progress in that direction that satisfies you. And if you get some better ideas, sure, you may follow someone's suggesting ideas, but not orders. I want to give you five of what you might call the biggies. These five are practiced by all men and women who are highly successful. And these five can be easily learned by you. And when you learn them, you'll develop self-confidence to a level you'll be unafraid to tackle anything. Here's the first top of the list. Most important of all. Dream big dreams. In every study that I've looked at of successful men and women, you find that often they go on for years and years, and then they begin to dream. They begin to say, why not me? If he or she could do it, why can't I accomplish it? It's really a mindset. You have to decide. We're going to try to do things differently. But I think you just have to sort of decide, let's think beyond the normal stuff. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is. And your life is just to live your life inside the world. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. And that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can build your own things that other people can use. That's maybe the most important thing. To shake off this erroneous notion that life is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. So dream big dreams and you can fulfill your dreams. Every one of us has had an experience at one time when we were small. 
we had a vision of growing up and having our own cars. And as we grew older, we had a vision of having our own homes and our own families. And as we grew older, we had a vision of traveling and going to Europe. The wonderful thing is, we always tend to achieve our goals. The most sophisticated and intelligent and knowledgeable and successful men and women in our society dream all the time. So the starting point of learning how to dream is very simple. It's a list of your dreams. What does it mean? It means you ask yourself, what would I dream of if I had no limitations? And this is the key. Now, a dream list is... Take a piece of paper in front of you and imagine that you had all the money and all the time. Anything that you could be, have or do is possible for you. And say, if I had no limitations, what would I really want in my life? Today, tomorrow, next week, next year, five years and so on. And write it down. Write as fast as you can. And remember, decide what's right. Decide what you really want. You actually see yourself in better terms because you're allowing yourself to think of yourself as the kind of person who can accomplish things by the very act of dreaming. You also find that your self-esteem goes up. You like yourself better. Respect yourself more. After you've done your dream list, stop and visualize and engage in what we call back from the future thinking. It's imagining that this is you here and up here is your goal, your star, your dream, maybe five or ten years away. You project yourself forward into the future, like you're standing on top of a mountain. And then you look all the way back down to where you are today and say, here's where I am today. And you look down, you say, there's where you are right now. And from this vantage point of being five years in the future, you ask yourself, what would I have to do to get from there, to get up to the top of this mountain? What path would I have to follow to accomplish my goals? Seeing where I am now, seeing where I want to be today. What do I see to do? You'll see things that you cannot see from the mental vantage point of looking from the bottom up. Now, in addition to this, there's another method of thinking. It's called blue sky thinking. You imagine that you have the whole blue sky above you. You imagine that you have no limitations. It's almost like you're floating through a space. And you imagine that everything is possible. A little bit like a dream list, if you like. Imagine if you were starting your life over today and you could do or have anything. And you could have no limitations or constraints at all. What would you choose to do? When you begin to fantasize with fun ideas, you start to move into the ranks of the best thinkers in history. The final point with dreaming big dreams has to do with clarity. You need clarity with regard to your ideals. You need clarity with regard to your values. You need clarity with regard to your goals. There have been hundreds of biographies and autobiographies that have been written by men and women and about men and women who have accomplished great things. And that they found is that they all have one thing in common. They develop a sense or a belief deep down inside that their life stands for something important, that it means something, that they're here to do something really special with their lives. Now, the second key to great success practiced by all high achievers is to develop your special talents. You know, the great tragedy is that only about 5%, maybe 1% of people ever fulfill the potential. That was given to them when they were born. The smartest men and women of all are those who listen to their inner voice and look at what it is they most enjoy doing and organize their lives so that they do more and more of those things. What would you do? If you won a million dollars in the lottery today and you got the million dollars cash tax-free? This is a very powerful question because if your first answer is that you'd quit your job, it means you may be in the wrong work. It may mean that you are in danger of wasting your life. But it could be that you would say, I would do this more. I would do it better. I would change. I would start this. I would get into that. Get out of that. What would you do if you won a million dollars? That'll often tell you where your natural talents and abilities lie. Now, the final question is, is what sort of activities give you your greatest feeling of importance? What gives you your greatest feeling of importance? When you're engaging in these activities, you feel terrific about yourself. You feel happy about yourself. You feel important. Your self-esteem goes up. 
You feel in command and control of your life. Well, here's the third key to great success. Accept 100 responsibility for your results. If you're not happy with something, change it, but don't complain about it. Complaining is a sign of weakness, but it's also a sign of victimhood. A person who complains is basically saying, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. And what this does is that it guts your self-esteem. It just takes away all your motivation and all your self-confidence. So even the choice of words can be very bad. The reason that people don't succeed is because they have excuses. You cannot imagine a leader weeping, whining, crying, and making excuses. You can only give away control. You remain responsible for yourself for your entire adult life. You are literally blocked in place, almost like there's a wall in front of you until you accept responsibility and make the leap and never make another excuse. So we say that the word responsibility can be broken down into two words. Response and ability. Your life will be one series of challenges after another. The only question is, can we respond effectively? And if you do, you continue to grow. And the wonderful thing is, and I learned this in the metaphysics, make the decision that no matter what happens, you will respond effectively and pre-program yourself. If you make that decision in advance, then when the problem occurs, it's almost like they push the automatic button. You're already set and you respond effectively. You don't even have to think, what should I do in this situation? You just respond in an effective way. This attitude is the attitude of the leader. Now the fourth great key is single-minded concentration. The ability to focus clearly and know exactly what it is you want to accomplish. And the ability to concentrate single-mindedly on accomplishing that one thing without diversion or distraction are the keys to success. You see, in life, there's never enough time to do everything, but there's always enough time to do the important things. Successful people, peak performers, concentrate on the top items. And remember, anything other than working on the top items on your list is a waste of your time. We all have the same 24 hours a day. And the ability to concentrate, 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 to discipline yourself, to use willpower and perseverance. To concentrate on one thing at a time is a quality of all success. Here's my favorite time management question, which I give to you for free. Before you start anything, ask yourself, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? Make a list and say, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? When you get into your car, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? When you leave the house or leave the office, say, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? Repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until it's driven into the subconscious mind as a command. And whenever you have a temptation to do something that is small and irrelevant, that command will go blam. And it'll push you into doing what is the most valuable use of your time. It makes you feel wonderful when you're working on something important and it makes you feel nothing when you're working on something irrelevant. Finally, number five, it's to do what you love to do. You can't motivate people. Motivation requires motive, and motive requires desire. And desire requires the person wanting to do it and wanting to do it because they love not only the possible results, but they love the very act of doing it. If you do what you love to do, you'll be supremely happy. You'll be supremely successful and you'll be extremely respected in your field. And that's worth more than an awful lot of money. Finally, the third part of determining what it is you love to do are the words attention, interest, and absorption. If you really love what you're doing, it will hold your attention. You'll draw your attention to it. You'll want to read about it and talk about it. Think about it. You'll want to be around people you look up to and admire, people who are successful in it. And the final word is absorption. You will find that if you're in the right field, you'll be absorbed by it. In fact, you will find that here's the ties. When you're doing what you are meant to do, time stands still. That could be the key to the great success that you're here to accomplish.